Have you ever looked underneath your Honda Power Tupperware and found a leak right here underneath it? Maybe you've crawled underneath there and you found where it's leaking. Might even think you know why it's leaking. More likely, you don't. In my videos, they're not only about how to fix things, but why they're broken in the first place. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly why it's broken. And it's not just because of rust. Let's get down with this. Most of the time when people work on things, they only fix the problem. They don't try to figure out why it was a problem in the first place, or they make assumptions that it was just rust. The real reason this broke is because the motor mount is bad. And when the motor mount's bad, it moves the transmission lines along the same time. And as it moves the transmission lines, if they're rusty at all, they're going to break off. My name's Clay with Clayway here in Muskegon, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Video, I'm going to show you how to repair, not replace, bad transmission line. On some sweet old Honda Power Tupperware. 0.5 Saturn View automatic transmission. If you've got a question for me, it's not baby mama drama related. I'll help you for absolutely free. Look me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook. And while you're watching this video, you might be asking yourself or questioning your ability to do this. I'm here to tell you, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Some people aren't going to have time to do this, so that's why they do it. I'm going to put a link down in the description below to my Amazon store where you can get the actual lines and don't have to make them the way I do in this video. But if you want to save yourself a couple of hundred dollars, check out this video. I'll show you how to do this for 30 or 40 bucks. And if I help you out, turn the volume down at nighttime, put on one of my sweet Clayway playlists, let them suckers play from front to back, or you can send me a donation. Just look right below the video. There's super thanks or the join button. Maybe I can get myself some new teats. Consider subscribing, giving me the thumbs up, sharing my videos. Let's go on with the show. Place and repair this line, we're gonna need a 10 millimeter to remove the screw that's in between this bracket right here. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. Usually I come up through the back side right here with my ratchet, eventually being able to remove this, which connects the two lines together. Usually you have to use a screwdriver to pry it apart. I'll taking a 7 8 or 21 millimeter, if I remember correctly, we're gonna loosen this bung right here. If it doesn't spin and it breaks off the line, that's okay, it's not really a problem. We're replacing this portion of the line anyways. You wanna keep a catch pan underneath it. Now you wanna put the line in a manageable area so you're able to eventually put a compression fitting on it and make your elbow. That bracket right here is something that I invented. These rust out on the fronts of these, these cradles do, and I just wanted to throw that in there because it's super freaking cool. So if you own a Saturn View, Chevy Equinox, GMC Terrain, Pontiac Torrent, and the subframe cradle mounts are rusted out, well, look me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I can make you one of them things. I'll need your VIN number. So now I think we're gonna go ahead and cut it right here. We'll probably cut it closer to this elbow right here. That reason, that gives us enough to fix the new line to. When you take this off of here, be careful. There is a washer on the end of that that needs to go back on it. Now we need to cut that transmission line and we use a cutter. And as you can tell, this little blade right here is gonna cut it as you spin it. You gradually turn it in to where it's just a little bit tight, but you're still able to spin it. And as you spin it, you tighten it down a little bit more every once in a while after every couple turns and eventually it'll cut through your line. These are readily available at your local Vato Zone or your dad's toolbox. This is the location that I use to put it in. Trust me, you might think this is a little bit tough, but it's not. If anyone else can do it, I promise you can do it too. After a couple turns, you're gonna start to see it finally break and eventually it will come right apart. You'll have a nice clean cut and be able to use a compression fitting on that. Or you could use rubber hose and some double clamps on each end. I just don't recommend that. Compression fittings will work really good in this situation. Okay, first off, we've got our line right here. We need to remove this part from this part. And in order to do that, there's a really important clip cover right here that slides back. We need to make sure that we put this back on there when we're done that holds this clip from falling off. Now, let's say this one's busted like the other one that I worked on the other day. You could use a really small zip tie and zip tie around here. A lot of times you're gonna find that this is rusted in here and doesn't move and you took it off and then it broke off inside there. If it does do that, like this one did, 
we've got a little shoulder on here that goes down inside the fitting. What you're gonna do is you're gonna eventually get this clip out of here and I'll demonstrate to you how that clip goes in there. A lot of times the best way to do this is to take a pick tool and get up underneath the ending of it, not the center up here at the top. This is the center of that little, little valley right there. Get up underneath there. You don't want this thing to go flying either. These are a pain in the ass to find. And you don't want to bend it up too much because then it won't work on your new line. So once you get it up like that, you can start working it back. Sometimes these are going to be really rusty. And then go to the other side and do the exact same thing. I'm going to pick a little bit of the rust out of there. Once I get it up, I'm going to keep my finger over the top of it. Take the pick tool, slide it up in there like that. That allows me to pull it up like this and keep my finger on it so I don't lose the clip. Now the clip is out of there. Theoretically speaking, you should be able to pull it out just like this. It'll have this shoulder on here and we need to remake this shoulder on a new piece of brake line. We're gonna take a 3 8 brake line that we got from the store. You can get 12, 18, 20 inches, whatever. I got 20 inches because I needed to make two of these and I've already made one. An important note is down inside here, there's a rubber O-ring. We wanna make sure that rubber O-ring is not broken. It's a good idea to take some brake cleaner, clean this off. Make sure you clean out any loose rust inside there. Let's say your line is rusted and seized inside there. Now I've already taken this one out. It was pretty much flush with this. Took a screwdriver, I banged it in there and then I was able to use the edge of this as a pry down and pull it up. And along here, I took a pick tool, cleaned that up, took a pick tool, cleaned out the rust out of the inside of there. Now with that cleaned out of there, you need to make a fitting that looks like this. So it will go down inside here. We've got a flare, hydraulic flaring kit. You can usually rent these at Battlezone. I'm gonna take out 3 8 insert. This 3 8 eye. This will say 3 8 on it as well. We're gonna remove our tool out of here. We're gonna take our brake line. We're gonna insert it in there like this using the countertop. Makes it fit flush along the outside edge of here. We need to make sure it's pushed all the way down. If it's down inside here, it's not gonna make it properly. Take that, that inside there. Make sure the line doesn't move. Make sure your die is rested all the way against the stop and you tighten it up tightly. Check and make sure it's still flat right here. Secure it down. Make sure that your neck is screwed all the way back. Fit in your die. You can use your fingers on the other side to do this, to guide it in. As you turn it clockwise into there, make sure it gets around the hole and you can move it back and forth once it starts entering on the tube. Turn it clockwise until it stops. Turn this clockwise to lock that. Pump, you're used to that. Now you wanna pump it down until it stops, until your trigger gets hard to push. And the reason that you don't keep pumping, which I'll show you, if you what happens if you do, is because if you keep pumping, when you turn this counterclockwise to release it, this is not gonna slide back the way it should. So you turn it a little bit counterclockwise, and you're gonna see the barrel of the shaft start to come back there. Just take a hammer, give her a couple taps. Hopefully it comes back. Be gentle with it. You don't wanna destroy the tool. But if it doesn't come back, which is kind of fortunate in this situation, you can loosen that up. That might possibly work. That did. If that didn't work, you could loosen this up, remove the whole thing out of here because you'd be able to slide it all out as one piece, put this in the vise, and pop it out. Now you turn this all the way back. Now that's still stuck on there. We can fix that. This is the exact reason you don't pump as much as when you're alone because your shaft's going to get stuck inside there. Got it in the vise. Make sure the vise is tight. Make sure you grab it at the end you're not going to use. 
Make sure you take care of your tools and they'll take care of you. So this is cut. This is gonna be too long. You need it to be approximately 13 millimeters from the top of this, so the back side of this, to the tip of this. It's too long it won't fit down inside this. So what I've done is I took sandpaper, I ground this down a little bit, put a smidge of penetrating oil inside it, grease, whatever you want, doesn't really matter. I take this and if it won't slide down, which is kind of what we want, take a seven eight socket and I'll bang it into there. Now you gotta be careful because this wants to stick inside here and if that does that, that's pretty much because this has went down inside here. And if that happens and it gets stuck inside a socket because it's got a round hole like mine on the inside of the barrel, then you're going to have to clean up these threads when you're done if you do it that way. And more than likely, you're going to need to. This is pretty simple to make the correct length. Our cutoff tool it up to where the outside is right here on the shoulder. And that'll pretty much give us the length we need. We end up with this. Now we've got the correct length. Using a sanding disc, we can sand it down and make it look like this. You no, know you could take this and tap it on the concrete, but you're gonna flatten them. Threads may not be able to fix them. So in order to get that down into there where you need it to be, use the socket. It's not dropped down there far enough because we can still see the ribs. So the spring won't collapse in there as it should. So we need to make sure it's far enough down inside there. With that far enough down inside there, we can take and put our clip on. Now how these clips work is the into a location where there's not a window. So when you push this down, you're gonna be pushing straight into a window with each end with the window being in the center of there. It's extremely important that when you look down in here, you can see the little legs, all three of them. If, it's, if you can't, this clip can spring back. So as long as this is not broken, you wanna make sure you put it on. If it is broken, you can just use a really small zip tie and make sure you secure it on the outside of here so your spring doesn't pop out. Then you wanna make sure that it spins because you're gonna to need to be able to spin this end in there. And if it doesn't spin, that's when you take it and sand it a little bit more and you'll be 100% successful when you go to put it underneath the vehicle. Now that's a manageable size. Make sure you put your clip retainer back on and it snaps into place all the way around and it should be flush like that. You can do all of this while pantless so you don't have anything to worry about. Now we're gonna take and bend this line. This is the line bender that I have. Take and put this up in here and it's kind of a pain in the dink. Basically, slide it up there to the 3 8 portion. And you can do all this. You don't have to worry about your old lady and the guy she's with right now. We can just get this done. We're gonna take the elbow portion and we're gonna pretty much make a 90 degree bend in this one. It's gonna be a little bit longer, but it's okay. It'll work. At least I think it will. Wanna make sure that's not all cockeyed so we kinda have to pull it out a little bit. We got a nice L on here. Our end is spinning. You can go and stall it in the car. We're gonna put it up inside the car, but we wanna make sure that this isn't too long. So we may have to cut this down a little bit. What we do is we kind of mock it up against the old line. Plus we're gonna take a little bit of the old line and some sandpaper and clean up the outside of the old line. So when we put our compression fitting on, it seals up really well. With it near the location, I noticed that it's gonna be about two or three inches too long, so I'm gonna cut it down. I'm certain that's not what she said. Don't cut it too short to your elbow because then you won't be able to get your compression fitting to fit correctly and it won't seal down properly. So leave it about an inch back from there. I'll take in a 9 16 and 5 8 wrench, 3 8 compression line fitting. Take one end apart. There's two pieces. First you slide this on here. That needs to slide on there and be able to move. Then you slide this on here. As that tightens up inside there, it's gonna crush that down, locking this end to the other end that you're putting together. No matter how far it goes on there, because this is gonna bottom out in the bottom of this. Your parts up to there. Take the one side, tighten it up completely, leaving the other side loose. 
Make sure you put your washer on here and your condom on when you're in the bedroom or you're gonna have some little baby washers running around everywhere. Found that laying with your body, same direction as the automobile, allows you to see up in here easily. Make sure your condom doesn't fall off as you're putting your line up in there. I mean washer. Make sure you start your line squarely as you turn it. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to turn, so you end up starting it with a wrench. Just be patient. Do not cross thread it. Your line is clocked in the right direction. Before you tighten it up, before I tighten mine up, I'm actually gonna put my compression fitting on and start it. Don't forget that this bottoms out into your compression fitting, and then this pulls to your compression fitting. You wanna make sure you have the tip inside there nice and tight. That's what she said. Now, anytime you turn it's nut up in here, you're not gonna have a lot of room to swing. So every time you turn, you're gonna flip the wrench and that'll allow you enough space to be able to get it turned at a quarter turn at a time. But hopefully you're able to tighten it down with your fingers enough where you'll only have to do that a few times. Now, I just snug this stuff up. You don't have to go all Gorilla Godzilla crazy and tighten this down and strip things out. Just needs to be snug. You can tighten it up more if it's still leaking. Now I made sure my lines were congruent, not rubbing or touching on anything. I'm gonna take some zip ties and zip tie these up so they don't move. You question how tight you got them. You can look at the proportion from this to this. This could be tightened up another thread or two. Check and make sure it's not leaking. Boom! The dishes are done, bitches. You've got several hundred dollars left in your pocket. And send a little bit to me. Remember, don't be the next to them. Be the absolute first to you. If you want to donate to the channel, donate down below in the super chat or join. I'll send you some special stuff. Last month, we gave a $300 scanner away only to people who were joined to the channel or used super thanks. So the odds of winning were like one in 10. That was pretty damn good. We didn't do it for the money. We did it because we wanted to know that people actually appreciated what we did. I mean, hell, I think I got like 50 bucks or something. It wasn't any real considerable amount of money, but... When you do things like that, that shows me that you really appreciate it. But I'm happy with comments, so don't think that you poor folks out there need to actually do it. You can help me by just turning the volume down at nighttime and letting one of my playlists play. That helps a lot, and anybody can do that. Or if you got a question for me, you can hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. I help everyone I possibly can. No matter what it is in life you think you can or cannot do, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. God bless. Don't be the next to them. Be the first to you. Have the absolute best of days.